Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to lecture 10. Here in this particular lecture, we will be talking about sustainability issues relating to real estate and real estate practices. So, let us move on. So, first the table of content. So, in this particular lecture, we will be uh, covering uh, topics like uh, sustainability, its importance, uh, what are the different sustainability initiatives. Uh, government policies and initiative uh, incentives relating to sustainable action in real estate. Then certain certifications uh, from LEED uh, to IGBC to GRIHA, uh, then uh, certain codes which are energy conservation building code, then energy star program. So, all this will be uh, there and apart from that we will also cover ESG, how the ESG reporting and disclosures. Uh, for the real estate are the investor demand for ESG integration, uh, the in ESG integration in real estate, business reporting and sustainability reporting which is a Indian uh, uh, government required uh, ESG uh, type of uh, reporting which is uh, required from Indian companies that will also be uh, covered and then we will uh, talk about certain future trends and opportunities which are uh, coming up because of this uh, ESG and uh, the uh, certain other important uh, trends which we are looking at in uh, uh, real estate uh, ranging from net zero buildings to circular economic practices, uh, resident design and digitalization and smart technologies uh, adaption in real estate. So, moving on to the revision of what we have done in previous session. So, in the previous session we have seen uh, uh, property condition, uh, how we can evaluate that, uh, how we can do different type of analysis relating to uh, properties. So, uh, analysis such as uh, national analysis uh, uh, where we are looking at the bigger picture uh, of uh, the economy, the, the demographic trends which are taking place at the national level. Then we move uh, to the regional uh, analysis uh, where we talked about region specific aspects where the property is lo located. Then moving on to the more uh, closer uh, uh, analysis, uh, more micro analysis which is your neighborhood analysis and then the property analysis and uh, such type of analysis which brings us uh, a comprehensive analysis of uh, how the property uh, is and where it is situated and what are the different aspects which affect it. So, that was uh, uh, covered in that uh, session and also um, um, we uh, looked at um, what are the trends which uh, emanate uh, from uh, all these analysis uh, when we analyze all these uh, 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 neighborhood, uh, national, regional uh, issues, uh, certain trends which emerge out of it, we look at that. Then we go for the, the data which is coming from all this, we are evaluating it and then we, on the basis of that we strategize, we, we set our rents and in the last we do a cost benef benefit analysis that is if we are suggesting any specific changes to the uh, management, the changes which are required for the overall uh, scheme of things whether it is the strategy for how we are functioning or uh, if we want to increase rent, if such type of changes are there, if we expect that changes to happen, we have to convince that the, uh, the, the cost benefit analysis uh, is uh, pointing us that uh, we are moving in the right direction and this uh, change which we want will be profitable. So, all this was, this was analyzed uh, done in the previous session and now we will talk about the sustainability aspects of the real estate. So, first the importance of uh, uh, sustainability. So, sustainability in real estate is not just a buzzword, it is a critical factor that influence the uh, environmental, social and economic aspects of our built environment. So, let us explore the importance 
firstly the environmental impact of real estate operations cannot be overlooked by adopting sustainable practices such as reducing our carbon footprint through energy efficient buildings, conserving natural resources like water and land and minimizing pollution. We can contribute to mitigating climate change and preserving our planet for future generations. Uh, secondly, sustainability in real estate has significant social implications. It's about creating spaces that prioritize human health and well-being, fostering inclusive and vibrant communities, and uh, promoting equity among all stakeholders, from designing buildings uh, with ample natural light and ventilation to investing in amenities that promote social interaction, sustainable real estate can enhance these quality of life for the occupants and communities alike. Um, lastly, uh, let us not forget the economic impact of the sustainability in real life by improving asset value through green building certification and sustainable design features, reducing operational costs through energy and water efficient measures and attracting tenants and investors who prioritize sustainability. Sustainable real estate can deliver long term financial returns and ensure resilience and competitiveness of real estate asset in the market. So, if we summarize, sustainability is not just about doing what is right for the environment, it is about creating real estate that is environmentally uh, responsible, socially equitable and economically viable. Embracing sustainable practices in real estate management is essential for building a more sustainable, resilient and prosperous uh, future for all. So, then we move to certain sustainability initiatives. So, focusing on the conservation and energy efficiency that is one initiative in the sustainability. Then commercial properties, if we look to commercial properties, uh, one of the big uh, thrust for the uh, businesses these days is that the properties in which they are opening their offices should be environment friendly. So, commercial properties are increasing embracing sustainability initiatives to minimize environmental impact and reduce operational cost. Conservation uh, measures and energy efficient practices are prioritized to enhance building performance and occupant comfort while reducing carbon emissions. Then better building initiatives. So, the better building initiative led by the US Department of Energy encourages building owners to implement energy saving measures and undertake retrofit to improve energy efficiency. So, that is something which is done at the United States level. Um, um, and then owner participating in initiatives gain access to resources, technical assistance and financial incentives to support sustainability effort. Uh, then uh, talking about uh, 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 retrofit projects, owners undertake retrofit projects to enhance energy efficiency and may qualify for various incentives which includes tax credits, grants and rebates. These incentives helps offset the upfront cost of retrofitting and encourage property owners to invest in sustainable upgrades. Then uh, uh, role of organizations, uh, organizations like the US Green Building Council. Uh, uh, Indian Green Building Council IGBC and uh, in Energy Star uh, uh, play pivotal role in promoting sustainable development practices and commercial real estate. USGBC offer LEED certification that is leadership in energy and environmental design uh, which recognizes building for their sustainable design, construction and operation. Energy Star on the other side provides tools, guidelines and certification to help property owners benchmark energy performance. So, we will be uh, in detail talking about these certifications. Uh, so, sustainability initiatives and commercial properties focus on conservation, energy efficiency and retrofit projects to reduce environmental impact and operating cost. Collaboration with government initiatives uh, uh, both um, in different parts of the world. Uh, we just looked at one of the uh, US example. There are uh, examples from all around the world where the governments are taking to encourage uh, uh, engagement of uh, the, uh, the, the, the industry into this particular area. More and more uh, programs are being created. Um, Indian government have their own programs. Uh, which are uh, uh, encouraging uh, uh, companies to 
uh, look for uh, sustainable options. And uh, uh, one of the area where they uh, try to improve is uh, going for the offices which are sustainable, which are energy, uh, uh, which are energy saving. So this trend has now uh, uh, basically um, being um, being uh, coming up in all the parts of the world, uh, different countries, and uh, um, certifications like USGBC, IGBC are uh, instrumental in that particular direction. So that is the sustainability initiatives we are talking about. Uh, then uh, certain uh, government policies and incentives. So we have uh, government worldwide recognizing the importance of sustainability in built environment and have implemented various policies and incentives. Uh, we have seen certain uh, actions by the US uh, in the last uh, uh, slide uh, talking about uh, certain actions from the European Union. They have enacted, uh, enacted uh, directives and regulations to promote energy efficiency in building such as the energy performance of building directives which st set standards for energy performance and certification requirements. In India, the government has introduced several initiatives and regulations to incentivize sustainability in the real estate sector and address environmental challenge. One of the prominent initiative is the energy conservation building code. We will be dwelling and deeply understanding that in the uh, next few slides, but uh, that is one area where in India is also taking initiative. So, which sets minimum energy performance standard for new commercial buildings and metro major retrofit. Additionally, the Indian government offers financial incentives and subsidies for green building construction through various schemes. State government also play a significant role in promoting sustainability through local building codes tax incentives and subsidies for renewable energy and installation. So you can clearly see that programs from both US, uh, we have seen program from European Union, we have seen examples from India. So a uh, uh, world level thrust is taking place uh, towards the sustainability issue and uh, um, uh, government want uh, uh, private uh, companies to also uh, come and join them in this direction and uh, this has been observed that businesses are also moving uh, and uh, uh, going for the sustainability changes in their uh, real estate, uh, their decisions because uh, ultimately one thing which, is, which has also been observed that uh, this can also be very um, uh, economical, this can also be um, uh, profitable in long term. So that is another uh, uh, reason why the private uh, uh, industry uh, industries are also joining in. So then we have uh, LEED certification. So LEED certification uh, is uh, uh, the leadership in energy and environmental design uh, which is globally recognized rating system for green building design construction, operation and maintenance. Developed by the US Green Building Council, USGBC, uh, LEED provides a framework for sustainable building practices aimed at reducing environmental impact and promoting occupant health and well-being. Then benefit for building owners and managers. LEED certification offers numerous benefits for building owners and real estate managers including enhanced marketability and property value. LEED certified buildings are attractive to tenants, investors and occupants seeking environmentally responsible and healthy spaces. Operational cost savings is another factor, energy and water efficient features as well as sustainable practices lead to lower utility bill and reduced operational expenses. Improved occupant satisfaction and productivity. Green building features contribute to better indoor air quality, natural light and thermal comfort, enhancing occupant health well-being and productivity. Then we have certain LEED rating levels, we need to understand that. So LEED certification offers four rating levels based on the number of points earned across various sustainable categories. So if building is earning 40 to 49 points, then it is certified. If the points are between 50 to 59 points, then it is silver. If the points are between 60 to 79 points, then it is gold and 80 plus will be platinum plus. So there are different levels uh, uh, and according to the marks, the certifications will be provided. So each level represent a higher degree of sustainability performance with platinum being the highest achievable rating. Then the significance in 
utility resource efficiency. So, LEED certification emphasizes utility resource efficiency by promoting strategies for energy and water conservation, water reduction and sustainable material usage. Building with higher LEED ratings demonstrates a superior performance in resource utilization and environmental stewardship leading to long term sustainability and resilience. So, LEED certification is a prestigious recognition of sustainable building practices offering tangible benefits for building owners, real estate managers and occupants. The different LEED rating levels signifying a varied degree of sustainability achievements with platinum representing the highest level of performance in utility resource efficiency and environmental responsibility. Then we talk about IGBC certification. So, uh, the Indian Green Building Council IGBC stands as a beacon of sustainability in the Indian construction industry, part of the prestigious Confederation of Indian Industry CII. IGBC has been instrumental in spreading the adoption of green building practices throughout India. It serves as guiding light, offering innovative solutions and framework to propel the nation towards a more sustainable built environment. Then tailored green building rating system. So, one of the hallmarks of IGBC is its comprehensive suite of green building rating system tailored to the diverse need of the Indian context. These rating systems encompass various building typologies including residential, commercial, industrial and institutional sectors. By providing specialized rating systems, IGBC ensures the sustainability is integrated seamlessly into every facet, every facet of the built environment. Now, IGBC certification process, uh, 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 the IGBC certification process is the rigorous yet rewarding journey towards sustainable excellence. The process begins with the assessment of projects on different sustainable TMAP parameters ranging from energy efficiency and water conservation to material selection and indoor environment quality projects that demonstrate exceptional performance in these areas and are awarded IGBC certification signifying their commitment to sustainable practices. The benefits of IGBC certificate. So, the benefit of IGBC certification extends far beyond mere recognition. Firstly, it enhances the reputation of building and projects, positioning them as leaders in sustainability within their respective sectors. Secondly, IGBC certified buildings are known to significantly reduce operating cost through improved energy and water efficiency leading to long term savings for owners and occupants. occupants. So, this is something which I discussed earlier that uh, the industry is also now willing participant in the sustainability initiatives because in the long term the profitability of the buildings, the viability of the buildings increases with the sustainability initiatives. So, the aspect of uh, uh, long term profitability and uh, of course, that uh, the sustainability initiatives are uh, uh, helping uh, earth in the long term, both of them are a very uh, a good reason for uh, industry to also participate in these initiatives. So, perhaps most importantly, the IGBC certification ensures that indoor environments are optimized for occupant health and well-being, fostering a productivity and comfort. So, uh, in a sense, IGBC certification is not just a Badge of honor, it is a testament of the building's commitment to sustainability, environmental stewardship and societal well-being. Through its holistic approach to green building, IGBC continues to drive prestigious changes in India's built environment. So, then we move on to the next that is GRIA certification. So, uh, green rating for integrated habitat assessment that is GRIA certification represents an uh, effort to integrate sustainability principles into the uh, habitat design. It goes beyond more mere construction and seek to create a living spaces that harmonize with nature, conserve resources and enhance the quality of life for occupants. Developed by Terry, one of the India's foremost research institution in partnership with MNRE uh, that is uh, Ministry of New and uh, renewable energy MNRE and uh, uh, the Terry is the uh, 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 the energy and resource institute. Uh, they both have come together for this and uh, they, they are giving this particular uh, certification. So, uh, a meticulous evaluation journey uh, is, uh, is there that assesses projects on a multitude of sustainability criteria. So, from energy efficiency and water conservation to site planning and material selection. GRIA evaluates project holistically, 
considering their environmental impact, resource utilization and occupant comfort. So, based on their performance, projects are rated on scale of 1 to 5 stars with higher ratings indicating of superior sustainable outcomes. And what are the benefits of GRIA certifications? The benefit of GRIA certification extends uh, uh, far more than just recognition. Firstly, GRIA is a unique, uh, uniquely adaptable to the Indian context, taking into account the country's diverse climate zones, cultural preferences and socio-economic considerations. This ensures that GRIA certificate buildings are not just sustainable, but also responsible to local needs and conditions. Secondly, GRIA is recognized by the Government of India as credible and authoritative certification system, further enhancing its credibility and relevance in the marketplace. Uh, also, GRIA certification promotes sustainable development by fostering innovation, driving market transformation and raising awareness about the importance of environmentally responsible construction practices. So, in essence, we can say that GRIA certification is not just about building better structures, it is about building a better built environment for India and its inhabitants. So, moving on to the Energy Conservation uh, Building Code ECBC, another initiative uh, by Government of India. So, Energy Conservation Building Code or ECBC stands as a pivotal regulatory framework within India's construction industry developed by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. ECBC serves as a comprehensive guideline setting forth minimum energy performance standards for various types of building across country. These standards are crucial in driving energy efficiency with the, within the built environment, aligning the India's objective for sustainable development and energy security. ECBC applies to diverse range of building typologies including new commercial structures, institutional facilities, high-rise residential complexes and special economic zones. It mandates compliances at every stages of building lifestyle, life cycle from the initial design and construction phase to its ongoing operation and maintenance. This comprehensive approach ensures that energy efficiency considerations are integrated seamlessly into the entire building life cycle, maximizing the potential. So, and this comprehensive approach then ensures the energy efficiency considerations are integratedly seamless within the building life cycle. So, the benefit of ECBC compliance are manifold. Firstly, it is lead to tangible energy savings and cost reductions for building owners and occupants by optimizing energy consumption. ECBC helps mitigate environmental impact, contributes to India's broader sustainability goals. Additionally, ECBC compliant buildings are known to offer improved indoor environment quality, enhancing occupant comfort, health and productivity. It supports mechanism plays a crucial role in facilitating ECBC implementation across the real estate sector. Technical assistance and capacity building initiatives provide professionals with the knowledge and tools needed to navigate the ECBC requirements effectively. Financial incentives and subsidies offered by the state government further, uh, further incentivize the compliance, making sustainable building practices financially viable for developers and investors. Additional robust regulatory compliance and enforcement mechanism ensures the ECBC standards are upheld, driving widespread adoption and impact. So, that is the ECBC, uh, the code which we are talking about. Then we have another program, international program that is your uh, Energy Star program. So, uh, the Energy Star program which was established by uh, US uh, Environmental Protection Agency focuses on promoting environment, uh, promoting energy efficiency in building appliances and products. So, it is not just confined to the environment, it is applied to, applies to products. So, Energy Star certification is awarded to buildings um, and products that uh, meet strict energy performance criteria, indicating superior energy efficiency compared to standard counterparts. Uh, there are certain similarities with the LEED certification. Energy Star and LEED certification share similarities in promoting sustainability and energy efficiency in the built environment. Both program encourage the adoption of energy efficient practices and technologies to reduce the environmental impact and operational cost. While LEED focuses on overall sustainability and occupant health, Energy Star on the other side specifically targets energy efficiency and performance. So, there are some similarities and there are certain um, uh, differences. Then the importance of Energy Star label. So, the Energy Star label uh, serves as a recognizable symbol of energy efficiency and environmental stewardship and uh, building certification, building certified in the Energy Star program demonstrates significant energy savings and reduced greenhouse gas emissions, contributing to more sustainable future. 
So energy star label helps building owners and managers showcase their commitment to energy efficiency and attract environmental conscious tenant and investors. So uh, energy star programs plays a vital role in promoting energy efficiency and sustainability in building uh, appliances and products. Then we move on to the uh, sustainable practices in real estate operations. So these sustainable practices are not only beneficial for the environment, but also contribute to cost savings and promote healthier living spaces. So first let's talk about the waste management. One of the key aspects of sustainability is minimizing waste and reducing our impact on landfills. Real estate managers can implement waste segregation programs, recycle initiatives and composite, compositing system to divert waste from landfills and promote recycling and reuse by separating recyclable organic waste and non-recyclable materials, we can significantly reduce our environmental footprint and contribute to a more circular economy. So green cleaning practices play a crucial role in maintaining indoor air quality and reducing chemical exposure for building occupants. By using environmental friendly cleaning products and methods, real estate manager can create healthier indoor environment while minimizing the use of harmful chemicals that can pollute air and water sources. Uh, this can this change can take place. Then switching to green cleaning uh, solutions not only benefit occupants health, but also reduces environmental pollution and support sustainable goals. Also transportation uh, management is another area where real estate managers can make significant impact on sustainability, encouraging alternative transportation options such as carpooling, biking and using public trans transit can help reduce carbon emissions associated with commuting and elevating traffic congestions around the real estate properties. Providing amenities such as uh, the designated carpool parking spots and access to public transit information can incentivize tenants and employees to choose more sustainable transportation modes. So uh, real estate managers can promote healthier living and working environment and contribute to more sustainable future for all. Then we go to another important aspect of sustainability which is uh, picking up uh, uh, pace these days that is introduction to ESG. So before uh, we start, so ESG factors, so uh, first we have to uh, understand that ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. These are three broad categories of factors that are increasingly being considered by investors, businesses and organization when evaluating the sustainability and ethical practices of companies and investments. So let's take a look at the environmental aspect denoted by E in the ESG. This refers to a company's impact on the environment and include factors such as carbon emission, energy efficiency, water usage and efforts towards environmental sustainability and conservation. Secondly, we have the social aspect represented by the S in the e ESG. This focuses on how company interact with and impact society. It includes consideration such as community engagement, diversity and inclusion in the workforce, labor practices and initiative to promote employee well-being and social equity. Then we have governance which, indi which is in which indicated by the G in ESG refers to the governance structure and practices within an organization. This include aspects such as transparency in reporting, accountability of management, ethical behavior and decision making and adherence to regulatory requirements and industry standards. So understanding ESG is essential because it provides a framework for evaluating the broader impact and sustainability of companies and investment beyond just financial performance. And like any other industry, real estate is also uh, deeply touched by the ESG factors, the EST influence is very much there in the real estate also. So we will explore these factors and integrate into real estate practices, how they are uh, uh, there in the real estate practices for sustainability and responsible investment. So ESG reporting and disclosure. So ESG reporting refers to the practices of transparency, disclosing a company's environmental, social and governance performance to stakeholders including investors, regulators, employees and the public. This reporting is essential as it provides 
valuable insights into a company's sustainable practices and its commitment to responsible business operation. So let's look, uh, let's talk about the importance of ESG reporting. So transparent ESG reporting demonstrates a company's commitment to sustainability and responsible practices. It allows stakeholders to assess the environmental and social impact of a company's operations, its governance structure and its alignment with global sustainability goals and standards. By providing accurate and reliable ESG information, companies can build trust with investors, attract capital and enhance their reputation in the market. Then ESG reporting is supported by various global frameworks and standards that provide guidance on reporting ESG performance matrices. Some of the most widely recognized framework include the Global Re Reporting Initiative, GRI, which provides a comprehensive set of sustainability reporting standards, the Sustainability Accounting Standard Board, SASB, which focuses on industry-specific sustainable matrix, matrix, and the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure, TCFD, which provides recommendation for disclosing climate-related financial risk and opportunities. In summary, ESG reporting and disclosure play a crucial role in demonstrating a company's commitment to sustainability, attracting investors and enhancing transparency and accountability in the real estate industry. By adopting global ESG reporting framework and standards, company can provide stakeholders with meaningful and comparable ESG information that enables, uh, enables informed decision making and drive positive change to a more sustainable future. So that is ESG reporting and disclosure. Then what, what are the investors demand for ESG integration? So we will move to that. So in recent years, there has been a notable shift in investors preference with an increasing number of investors prioritizing environmental, social and government considerations in their real estate investment decisions. This shift reflects a broader recognition of the importance of sustainability and responsible investing in driving long-term value creation and mitigation risk. So why are investors increasingly focusing on ESG integration? That's a question. So there are several benefits associated with ESG aligned investments. Firstly, ESG integration can enhance uh, risk management by identifying and mitigating, mitigating ESG related risk that could impact the financial performance and value of real estate assets. By considering environmental and social factors, in investors can better understand and manage risks such as climate change impacts, regulatory compliance issues and reputational risk. Secondly, ESG integration can contribute to long-term value creation by enhancing the resili resilience and sustainability of real estate assets. Sustainable buildings with energy efficient designs and green certifications tend to attract higher rents, lower operating cost and higher occupancy rates resulting in enhanced financial performance and asset value over time. Also ESG aligned investments can provide access to capital from investors who prioritize sustainability and responsible investing. As the demand for ESG integrated investments continue to grow, company that demonstrate strong ESG performance are more likely to attract capital from diverse range of investors including institutional investors, asset managers and individual investors. So investors demand for ESG integration in real estate is driven by recognition of the potential benefit it offers including enhanced risk management, long term value creation and access to capital. By aligning their investment strategies with ESG consideration, investors can now can, no, can not only achieve their financial objectives, but also contribute to positive environmental and social outcomes in the real estate industry. So then we move on to ESG integration in the real estate. So on the environmental front, real estate practitioners focus on reducing their carbon footprint by implementing energy efficient building designs and technologies, optimizing resource consumptions through water conservation initiative and promoting sustainable land use practices to minimize environmental impact. Also, second uh, social considerations play a crucial role in ESG integration. Real estate professionals prioritize community engagement, fostering diversity and inclusion within their developments, 
promoting the health and well-being of building occupants through amenities and design features and supporting initiatives for affordable housing to address housing affordability challenges in their communities. Governance aspect are integral to ASG integration in real estate. This involves maintaining transparency and accountability in business operations, adhering to ethical business practices, ensuring compliance with regulatory standards and aligning with industry best practices to uphold the trust and confidence of the stakeholders including investors, tenants and the broader community. Thus, ESG integration in real estate is about more than just financial returns. It is about creating sustainable, resilient and inclusive environment that contribute positively to society and the environment. By integrating environmental, social and governance consideration into real estate practices, we can drive positive change and build a more sustainable future for generations to come. So, then we move on to another important aspect uh, of this uh, ESG integration in real estate and that is uh, identification of risk and mitigation strategies. So, for example, to address climate change risk, real estate manager may invest in energy efficient building technologies, incorporate green infrastructure uh, to mitigate flooding risk or conduct climate risk assessment to understand the potential impact on their properties. To address regulatory compliance risk, they may implement internal controls and procedures to ensure adherence to relevant laws and regulations. For social risk, they may engage with local communities through consultations and collaboration to address the concern and promote positive social outcomes. And for the reputational risk, they may adopt transparent uh, communication strategies and ethical business practices to maintain trust and credibility. By identifying and mitigating ESG related risk, real estate manager can not only protect their assets and investment, but also enhance their resilience. So, the risk from the climate change, regulatory compliance, social license to operate and the reputational risk, all this can be mitigated by such, such type of steps uh, by the real estate managers. Then we come to another reporting of uh, ESG related factors in India and that is BRSR. So, BRSR stands as a framework mandated by the Security and Exchange Board of India for listed companies compelling them to disclose their environmental, social and governance performance. It is essentially a mechanism through which companies provide transparent insights into their sustainability initiatives and practices. In the context of real estate in India, BRSR necessitates reporting on spectrum of aspects crucial to the real estate sector. This include environmental practices, community engagement endeavors, governance structures and ethical business conduct. Essentially, it is about ensuring that real estate entities are not just focused on profit, but also socially responsible and environmentally conscious. Then integration of sustainability in real estate. So, incorporating sustainability within real estate operations is paramount and BRSR, BRSR catalyzes this integration. It urges real estate companies to adopt sustainable building design, enhance resource efficiency and actively engage with the stakeholders. So, of course, BRSR is a pan industry. But uh, uh, real estate also is impacted, real estate uh, companies are also expected to uh, uh, file their BRSR and in that they are expected to do these actions. So, enhancing transparency and accountability, driving sustainable development goals. So, they are, they are the uh, part of the BRSR through the reporting the mechanisms which are there and uh, BRSR serves as a driver for achieving the sustainable development goals passed by UN and are uh, guiding light for such type of actions. So, BRSR uh, is one such reporting mechanism. Then uh, future trends and opportunities which are there uh, in ESG. So, uh, in integration of ESG in real estate finance that is one uh, area. So, as sustainability becomes increasingly important um, in real estate investment decisions, innovative financial financing mechanism are emerging to support ESG initiatives. One such mechanism is green bonds, which are specifically earmarked for financing in, uh, environmental sustainable projects such as, such as energy efficient buildings or renewable energy installations. Uh, uh, Im uh, impact, investing, impact investing is another avenue where investors seek to generate positive social and environmental impact alongside financial returns. So, aligning with ESG objectives 
uh, this is there. Then additionally sustainably linked loans offer incentives for borrowers to achieve ESG targets through favorable financing terms uh, thereby encouraging sustainable practices in real estate development and operations. Moving on to technology and data analytics, these two tools play a pivotal role in ESG uh, performance monitoring and management. By leveraging technology such as building automation system, IoT sensor, energy management software, real estate stakeholders can collect real data, real time data on energy consumption, water usage, indoor air quality and uh, other sustainable metrics. Data analytics tools then analyze this information to identify trends, optimize resource allocation and, and uh, data fostering accountability and trust among investors, tenants and the uh, stakeholders. So, uh, another issue is collaboration and advocacy efforts that are essential for advancing ESG integration in the real estate practices uh, and policy framework. So, industry collaboration brings together stakeholders from across the real estate value chain including developers, investors, policy makers and advocacy, advocacy groups to exchange knowledge, share best practices and collectively address sustainable challenges. Uh, so, uh, the integration of ESG in real estate finance, technology and data analytics and collaboration and advocacy uh, effort presents uh, exciting opportunities to drive positive environment and social impact while delivering long term financial returns. Then let us move to the net zero building. So, there are certain uh, important concepts which we need to understand for relating to the energy conscious, the the, the sustainable uh, uh, building uh, uh, construction changes which are taking place. So, one of them is net zero building. So, uh, so first of all, the uh, uh, what are the key features of uh, net zero building? So, these building produce as much energy as they consume, uh, leveraging solar panels, energy efficient system and smart controls enable this equilibrium, uh, emphasis on renewable energy sources and advanced technology distinguishes them from traditional structures. Then what are the future trends which we need to be aware about them? So, net zero energy building are anticipated to become more prevalent in real estate development. This indicates a growing inclination towards sustainable construction practices. Such buildings are expected to gain prominence in future architectural landscape. There are certain benefits of net zero buildings. So, it minimizes energy consumption by producing their own energy. Net zero building reduces reliance on external energy sources, cutting down overall consumption, reduce carbon emissions. The self sufficient energy model signifies lower carbon emissions associated with the traditional energy production methods. And then contributing to sustainable goals. Net zero buildings align with the global sustainability objectives by promoting renewable energy use and reducing environmental impact. There are certain implications of this. So, let us understand that. So, demand for advanced technologies and design strategies. Achieving net zero energy performance requires the integration of cutting edge technologies and innovative design approaches. Architects, engineers and developers must adopt to this demand collaborating to implement sustainable solutions. Net zero building standards will likely influence building codes and regulations driving industry wide shifts towards sustainability. So, in summary the rise of net zero energy buildings reflect a significant shift towards sustainable development practices. Their key features include energy self sufficiency and reliance on renewable sources offer tangible benefits such as reduce energy consumption and carbon emission. However, realizing the potential of net zero building entails embracing advanced technology and innovative design strategies. Now, uh, uh, let us take one example to understand uh, the, the net zero building. Uh, so, let us imagine uh, uh, university building uh, uh, and there is a new science wing which has to be constructed and it has to be uh, designed, uh, it is designed to be a net zero energy building. So, uh, uh, the, the, pic the picture, uh, the, the rooftop of the signs being covered in the, uh, will be covered in the solar panels, you can assume that. These panel ca capture sunlight and convert it into electricity. 
which powers the light, computers and other electrical equipment inside the building. Additionally, the classroom and laboratories will be equipped with energy efficient lighting, heating and cooling system as well as smart sensors and control that adjust energy usage based on occupancy and environmental conditions. All these features will work together to ensure that the building generate as much energy as it consumes over the course of year. What will be the future trends of this? So think of it as that the future of the construction. Architects and engineers and increasingly designed buildings will increasingly design such buildings to combat climate change and promote sustainability. So this will be there and benefit, there will be benefits of this. By harnessing renewable energy from the sun and optimizing energy usage, the science wing significantly reduce, will re significantly reduce its carbon footprint. This means less reliance on fossil fuels and fewer greenhouse gas emissions. So this will hel help the combating the climate change. So as a student, a student will not only benefit from the state of the art facilities, but also contribute to a more sustainable future. So uh, there will be uh, big implications of this. So more educational institute will adopt net zero energy building design. It will set a new standard for sustainable construction. It requires collaboration among architects, engineers and construction professionals to integrate renewable energy technologies and energy efficient systems into building design and inspire students and faculty to prioritize sustainability in their academic and research endeavors. So fostering a culture of environmental stewardship on campus. So that impact can be there because of one net zero building and its impact on the other such design. So the future uh, you will see that we will have more and more net zero buildings. Then there is another concept which we should be aware and that is uh, the circular economy practices. So uh, designing buildings with material that can be reused, repurposed or recycled at the end of their life cycle. Um, this uh, will have certain future trend. Adoption of the circular economy principle in real estate development and operations can definitely be there uh, and uh, already there are uh, efforts being uh, taken in that direction. Then the benefits of this, so reducing waste, promoting resource efficiency and minimizing environmental impact. There will be implications. What implications will be there because of this? So shift towards sustainable building material, innovative construction methods and circular supply chains. So all this can be understood. Then let's un understand it through uh, one example. So let's imagine a building made of, let's example of uh, Lego blocks. So a building is made of Lego blocks instead of um, joining the blocks together, you build in such a way that they can easily take it apart and then use the blocks to build something new when you are done. So that's the essence uh, we can take from this for the circular economy in real estate, designing buildings with materials that can be reused, repurposed or recycled just like uh, the example of the Lego blocks we have taken. So then another important concept uh, which is emerging and that is of resilient building. So here we are highlighting uh, uh, the integration of resilient design feature with the increasing frequency and severity of climate change uh, related risk and extreme weather events, it is becoming essential for building to be resilient to these challenges. So uh, uh, the, the challenges are grave due to climate change and uh, 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 the action of resilient design uh, features uh, will be there to mitigate those risks. So what are these, um, uh, what is this design which we are talking about? What are the key features of that? So uh, it's all about building in a way that reduces the risk associated with climate related hazards. This include things like flood resistant construction where building are designed to withstand flooding as well as incorporating green infrastructure and adaptive landscaping to help absorb water and mitigate risk. There will be a lot of benefits of this. The upside of incorporating resilient design uh, will, it, it will enhance the long term resilience of the building and communities, safeguarding assets from damage and ensuring business community even in the face of adverse weather events. In short, it is about protecting our investment and ensuring the, that building remain functional and safe for years to come. And what will be the implications? So there is an increased emphasis on climate adoption strategies, 
conducting thorough risk assessment and ensuring compliance with regulations aimed at enhancing resilience in a sense. It is about being proactive, preparing for and mitigating the impact of climate change. So, uh, um, resilient design building is the future option uh, for such type of risk which can be there um, uh, due to the, 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 the weather changes which are taking place, uh, trying to create buildings which are resilient enough for such uh, uh, situations being created due to the climate change. So, that will be there. Then digitalization and uh, smart technologies which are there. So, the leveraging cutting edge tools and systems to optimize building performance, uh, we have to adopt these new changes. They will include uh, things like uh, building information system modeling which allows for the digital representation of the building as well as internet of things sensors that collect data on various aspects of building operations. Additionally, artificial intelligence and data analytics play a crucial role in uh, analyzing the data and deriving insights to improve efficiency and sustainability. Uh, there will be future trends for this and that will be adoption of digitalization and smart technology at a rapid pace. Uh, and this will lead to greater efficiency and sustainability. Integrating technology into building design and operation will of course increase more with the years to come. Then there are benefits. Now, what are the benefits? The payoff of embracing digitalization and smart technology leads to host of benefits. Firstly, it improves energy efficiency by allowing for better control and optimization of building system. Secondly, it enhances occupant comfort by tailoring environment to individual preferences and also it optimizes maintenance processes allowing for predictive maintenance and reducing the downtime. There will be implications. Uh, 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 it means that there is a growing demand for skilled professionals who can design, implement and manage these technologies. It also requires significant investment in technology infrastructure to support the deployment of these systems. Furthermore, it necessitates a shift towards data driven decision making processes where insights gleaned in from data analytics uh, inform strategic decision about building operations and management. In summary, the adoption of digitalization and smart technologies in real estate is not just a trend. It is a shift towards a more efficient, sustainable technology, uh, ad uh, technology advanced built environment which will be the future uh, of the built environment. Uh, Let us take uh, example of a smart home where you can control the light, thermostat and security system from your smartphone. That the same level of convenience and control if applied to an entire building that is the power of digitalization and smart technology and real estate and that will be the future. And how to integrate that uh, into uh, built environment and how to achieve the maximum uh, uh, for the sustainability that will be something uh, has to be some, uh, taken care by the, um, the professionals relating to the real estate uh, industry. So, uh, we now, now conclude uh, what we have uh, discussed in this particular class. So, we started from the sustainability initiatives where we discussed that how the sustainability initiatives being um, uh, first uh, like uh, uh, taken uh, by the uh, government authorities, by the industry and uh, uh, what are the different sustainability initiatives and how they are uh, uh, being implemented, uh, implemented in the, uh, uh, the business of real estate. And uh, uh, we also looked at different type of certifications which are um, uh, related to uh, sustainability. We saw that whether it is LEED, whether it is IGBC in Indian condition, whether it is GRIHA. So, there are different type of uh, uh, certification processes that also we discussed in this particular uh, lecture. Uh, why these certifications are important that was also something which we covered and the, uh, 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 the, the, the some other different um, uh, initiatives by the uh, various governments whether it is from US government, from, US, uh, from European uh, Union or from India were also discussed. 
So, uh, the aspects relating to certification and uh, codes uh, were there as part of this particular uh, lecture. Also, we discussed about the uh, ESG, the environmental, social and governance uh, um, uh, uh, rating, uh, the, the, uh, the thrust which is there uh, for the uh, businesses to operate now. So, that was also discussed that how it is reshaping uh, the way we look at the business, that it is not just uh, profitability, but it is also about the future and the sustainability of the world, which is very much integral to the business of uh, uh, today and the future. And how the uh, uh, different uh, investors are um, also encouraging uh, companies to go for these type of uh, initiatives. Uh, uh, for the built environment, for the real estate, we directly looked at how the ESG uh, will impact the industry. Uh, also, we looked at some different type of building uh, designs or building uh, examples uh, which can uh, be the future of the uh, built environment, whether it is the uh, net zero uh, building or uh, whether it is the resilient, resilient design, all this was also part of the discussion of this particular uh, lecture. So, uh, uh, that, that was all covered in this particular uh, sustainability relating uh, topic for the real estate for which was covered and discussed in this uh, particular lecture. So, thank you.